Hello Year 6 and welcome to Tuesday's Literacy Lesson. Now, we have finished the comprehension book that we were working on, so you need this new reading comprehension book today. So it's the reading non-fiction book that we are looking at. Okay, so it's a slightly different setup in this reading book, so I'm going to explain that first. So you've got a text, as usual, um, inside. Now it folds out, it's quite a big text. So you've got that to read. So today's is Frozen Escapes, that and that. Okay. Now then there's quite a lot of questions on the one text. So we're not going to do all of the questions in one day. I'm going to tell you which questions you are focusing on and please, please only do those ones. Okay, so this text today, the Frozen Escapes one, is going to be for today, Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to take us a few days because you've got this book and your word power work as well. Okay, so the questions that we're going to focus on today are on pages six and seven. Okay, now let me just talk to you a little bit how the questions are set up. So you've got the text, like I say, that folds out, there's quite a bit of text to read. And then the questions we're going to focus on today are pages six and seven, they're fact retrieval questions. So the first lot of questions are on fact retrieval. Okay. Now, the second section then, which will be Wednesday, is inference. Then you've got word meaning, summary and language questions, and they will be on Thursday. So you can see there's a lot to do on one text. So that's why I only want you to do the work that I've set today, and that's pages six and seven. And we'll have a look at those together. OK, so we're only doing the fact retrieval questions today. Now, have a read of the text and then it does say here on the front to have a read and then give yourself a little bit of a brain break because there is quite a lot of text and then come back to the questions. OK, so I'm going to quickly go through the questions with you to give you some tips and, ha and help in hand. OK, so you've got here on number one. So on quite a few of these questions, it tells you which paragraph to read. So make sure that you are on the right paragraph. Okay, so like this one says, read the paragraph that begins, hotels come in all shapes and sizes. So it's only that paragraph that you need to answer the question. Okay, so then it asks you to write down two things that most hotels offer and it's two marks. So it's two different things that most of the hotels offer and use that paragraph. Please don't go off and find it from different places because the question has asked you to use that paragraph and you need two different things. The second one is a circle one and circle one and it asks you in which country was the first ice hotel built so it's all these facts retrieval questions are all about looking for keywords so this is saying the first ice hotel ice hotel so make sure you are looking for the first one and then find which country that it is in it is in okay then according to the text what is snice made of so find snice find the word snice in the text Circle it, have a look at what it says about it, and then find out what it's made of. Number four then, why do ice hotels need to be built quickly? Okay, so you need to find, so again, use keywords, so quickly. So it might be the word quickly, it might be a word like quickly, like fast um, or speedily. Okay, but you're probably looking for the word quickly, and then why do they need to be built quickly? Okay, then the, the next one is finding a particular paragraph. So it begins, there's one challenge. So find that paragraph, read it. One thing that can slow down the construction of a nice hotel. There might be more, but the question asks for one. So make sure that you only put one thing that could slow down the construction of a nice hotel. Okay, right, so then question six is a tip two. So it's got some boxes here and you've got to tick two. So it says, which of the following have been sculptures in ice hotels? So I'd be looking for the word sculpture and then some examples, it asks you to tick two. So not one, not four, two. So make sure you tick two. The next one then, why doesn't Carrie Tollington notice that ice ho hotels are cold? So again, keyword that, words that I would be looking for are this name, Carrie, Tolling, Carrie Tollington, and why doesn't she notice the that ice hotels are cold, so find that reason. So this next one is a two mark one, tells you which paragraph to look at. Of course, no, of course, outdoor pursuits aren't, so that's the paragraph. Look at just that paragraph, two indoor activities that visitors can do at ice hotels. 
make sure you've got two, make sure they are indoor activities. Okay, and then the final bit is to match these. So you've got three names down here and then some jobs or roles. So you've got a magazine reporter, a student and an expert in the tourism industry. And you've got to match which person is each one of these. So find their name in the text, find out what they do and match it up. Okay, so that's the only questions I want you to look at today, pages six and seven. Okay, right. Then your word power for today is called location, location, location. That's quite a tricky page because it's about dialects. Okay, now dialects, so it says different places in Britain and across the world have their own varieties of English called dialects. So they might use a different pronunciation of a word, so how a word is pronounced. So an example of what that would be book. So some people say book, some people say boop, don't they? Okay. It's like scone as well. Some people say scone, some people say scone. And that's a dialect. Different pronunciations, but sometimes different words altogether. So some people might have one word for something and somewhere else in this country, they use a different word for it. Okay. So the first bit then, there's a picture here. And I don't want to say what I call it. And it asks you what you call this particular type of shoe. And it tells you it's not a trainer. It's what you'd wear for gym indoors. So it asks you what you call them. And then underneath, it explains that in all over the UK, people use different words for this type of shoe. And it gives you some examples. OK. And then after it's told you that one, it asks if you can think of any other word that you know that people use a different word for it across the country. You might want to ask somebody at home. Okay? It also gives you some um, exam uh, suggestions. So like sandwich or child. So could you think of a different word that might be used for those things? You might want to ask somebody at home. You might, if you're struggling, have a look on the internet for different dialects across the UK. Um, but have a little think. Then it asks you if you can name any dialects. So that's where a particular area or a particular part of the country has their own dialect and it's got a name. And it says the dialect in and then a place is called. So it gives you the example here that in Liverpool, their dialect is Scouse. Okay, you might have heard that word. So ask somebody at home and if not, have a look and see if you can find any others in, in Britain. Okay, but then not only in Britain are there dialects, there's different varieties of English spoken across the world. So do you know, do you know any words they say in other English speaking countries? So it gives you some examples, Australia, South Africa, America, India or Pakistan that we don't say in Britain. Write them below. So it gives you an example here. In America, they say sidewalk for pavement. Okay, so you might know some other American words that we don't use. So for example, they say trash and we say rubbish. Okay, you might know some from other languages as well and it asks you to put them here. Okay, again, you could have a look on the internet if you are struggling with that because it's quite tricky. So then, so sometimes it's just words or phrases or sometimes it's just how we say something like I said, book and book and book. But sometimes dialects are, com are almost unintelligible to many other English speakers. Now, by unintelligible, it means that it's we, we can't understand it. So even though it's spoken in, in England, um, we still can't understand it or other people can't understand it. So it gives you a sentence from the Isle of Man here. So there's a scotch of snigs in the bay by the brew. Okay, I don't know what that means. And it tells you that that means there's a lot of sand eels in the bay by the headland. Completely different to how we would say it. So then it gives you an example from Hawaiian English um, and it asks you to think what you think it means. So there's no real right or wrong. Have a look at the words and see if you could work out what that might mean. OK. So then it asks you a bit. Of, this is a, a couple of these questions now. So what you think. So it says how difficult to understand do you think a dialect needs to be before it complete, becomes a completely different language? So think, how difficult would it be before someone had said, no, it's not a dialect anymore. It's a completely different language. Um, and then this next yellow box gives you a quote from a linguist. Now, a linguist is somebody that studies language. And he says, a language is a dialect with an army and a navy. 
So he's saying that a language is also a dialect, but it's got an army and a navy. So think about what an army and a navy do and what they what their job is and think, how might a language be similar to that? OK. Um, and then the last thing is, do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing that English has a lot of dialects? So that's what do you think? Do you think it's good or bad to have lots of dialects in England? OK, so that's your comprehension, pages six and seven for today. And your word power, pages 10 and 11 for today. OK, looking forward to seeing your answers and um, enjoy. See you tomorrow.